Welcome to another edition of Very Vogue with me, Val Klein Hands, where we talk everything social media, pop culture, style, all the fun stuff. Today, a little bit more social media focus with Harley Jordan. She is an influencer, talent manager, strategist, all the things. Harley, thank you for being here. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to chat. Me too. I want to learn all the things. I noticed that like, <laughs> when, I, <laughs> when I Google Harley Jordan, your website is the top hit that pops up just whenever yeah, I Google hell yeah. your name. <laughs> that, that has to make you feel like a boss. You know, yeah, that kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> mission accomplished. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, mission accomplished. I've done it. I can retire now. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I know you and I both love Rihanna. There's a post of yours that I saw recently that told me we feel the same way about her implementing her company Fenty Beauty into the Super Bowl halftime yes. show this year. Oh my goodness. Just touching up her face. I think it was blush on stage with her own makeup. Oh, just so genius. And the thing, the thing about that was that it was such a tiny action. Like you're telling me that you made this whole shebang, this whole halftime performance around this two second touch up of your blush so that you could call out Fenty Beauty. Right. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if it, and she didn't even have to pay to be part of that. I don't think she didn't have mm -hmm. to like, it's just, it's, it's her thing. It's almost basically free promotion. I bring this up because I know that that's one of your philosophies when it comes to what you do. Why do you think promoting yourself is so important in business? You encourage others to do that all the time. Yeah. I mean, I think that your brand story and who you are as a personal brand, your why behind the scenes is so gosh darn important to make someone press by. I mean, there is so much competition there. Anyone in any industry will tell you my industry is oversaturated. Everyone, everyone, mm. because number one, you're just flooded with things that the algorithm thinks you like, you know, the algorithm is a machine. It's going to feed you things that are similar to you. So standing out in a crowd of everyone on the internet is so hard. And your story is really going to do just that. Yeah, it is. And what do you think are some of the best ways to share that story? What do you think people are looking for when they're looking to connect with something? What's some mm -hmm. of the best information to put out there? Oh, just being authentic, honestly. And I know that's such a trigger word or a buzzword that means, I don't know, nothing and everything all at the same time. But, you know, we've had these two separate paths of social media that have kind of kickstarted. We have the aesthetic girlies who do these beautiful vlogs and oh, yeah. whatever. And then you have this really authentic version that is weird and wild and focused on storytelling the Elise Myers of the world that you know everyone is so hooked on did that girl get up and do her makeup and hair absolutely not never yeah <laughs> and all of us are so hooked we're here for it we want to yeah see we're here for it we, we are we want to see more of just the regular normal stuff probably right. because we've been so inundated with curated things and yes absolute perfection every single time and now we're kind of questioning that which I think is ultimately a good thing right and the pendulum uh, always swings you know like we yeah. we will always go back and forth between the curated and the uncurated and I think you're starting to see a little bit more of the curated on TikTok now as Instagram starts to be uncurated so it's an interesting mm. shift and something to look out for as you scroll um especially as comparisonitis starts to sink in and yeah, kind yeah. of overthinking any kind of perfectionism because it's such a cue for you to press that unfollow button. It is because if, uh, if we're just over it, yeah, I mean, if we're over it or if it's not inspiring or if it just, I don't know, doesn't get our attention or strike uh, whatever interest that we do have, we're uh, on to the next. There's so much out there. It's hard to think about what separates us from all of the things that are all everywhere. And really the only thing that separates us is who we are as people. Totally. So it's kind of a no brainer, but it, it makes sense. You know, I, I made a reel probably last summer that said something along the lines of, you know, you don't have to talk about everything in your personality to show off some of those details that make you who you are. And yes. within this reel, I zoomed in on this not 
that's currently also right now in my headphones. And <laughs> the reason that I did that is because the people that get it will get it. The people that mm-hmm. notice are going to be like, that's my girl. That's, <laughs> that's who I am as a person. That's, I am a hurricane and so is she. And <laughs> that's how we're going to relate. <laughs> you're more than a hurricane though I mean, your bio a on tornado your screen, a, a tornado <laughs> I mean all the above avalanche <laughs> we can pull out any natural disaster we're, we're everywhere at all times just doing the most that's how I yeah, look at it yeah but, really but that's okay <laughs> uh, your bio on Instagram explains that you're a coach for passionate overthinkers and hearing mm-hmm. you describe yourself as kind of all over the place makes sense because overthinkers are very much all over the place so you understand this <laughs> Oh, and- I, I coach what I need. I was having a, I was having a conversation with a creator in my program, which is called do less club the other day. And she was like, Oh, I just overthink so much. Or like, she was talking about all of this, like internal mindset struggle. And she was asking me how I handle it or how I, how I manage. And I was like, girlfriend, I have the same struggles. That's why I'm here. Like, go ahead, word vomit on me. Like, tell me all that's going on in your brain. We'll work through it because I get it. (laughs) So much. And it does help to have something to just kind of vent and get that out. And then maybe you can find some like actual helpful nuggets in the middle of all that. I think the hardest thing that overthinkers struggle with is just staying focused on whatever their goal is. So do you have any tips on staying focused? I I really think it comes down to when you're overthinking, when you're inundated with all of this noise and you're in your head about, okay, I need to do this billion things on my to-do list. I am consuming so much on the reels tab. I am hearing conflicting advice left and right in both ears. What, what on earth do I do? I -hmm. think the best advice is to really get quiet and to think about what your end goal actually is. Because, you know, you have all of these shoulds, all of these rules of the internet of how you're supposed to perform online. And at the end of the day, if it doesn't feel right to you, if it gives you the ick, get out of there. You like break the rules. Who cares? Who cares? Um, Show up what, how, how it feels right. And stop trying to Please people, because if you're too focused on how you're being perceived, as opposed to how you're actually being, you're not showing up as your best self for your audience. No. And I think people see that. I think they read through that too. Yeah. They can tell you're not enjoying yourself with it if you're just so monotone and bleh. but if you're just like ah, I have all this to say then it's like okay you have my attention <laughs> right and I mean even even trying to be cooler than you are like trying to fit in with the mm-hmm. aesthetic cool girls like you don't need to do that you really don't you like I said you have your Elise Myers of the internet who show up in poor lighting with their hair a mess and no makeup on and that's okay and if that's you do it do it girlfriend (laughs) i love it how did your journey as a coach begin (laughs) oh it's been a long journey so Mm. i was actually a exercise science major believe it or not and Mm. i graduated from uh college i was gonna say high school and um I wanted to go to school for nutrition. I wanted to be a nutritionist in high level sports. Um, so I was going to take a gap year and decided, okay, I am going to jump into the business world. I am going to get any kind of business knowledge that I, that I can. And mm-hmm. so I started working in business operations. And as I got deeper, I realized, oh, you know what? The world of business operations and making a business more efficient is so synonymous with making the body more efficient, which was the textbook knowledge that I actually knew. So as I got further, I was like, you know what? These hard skills and these soft skills, I don't know why I'm getting so hung up on I only know exercise science or I only know how to do this one thing. So fast forward, hit COVID. I was actually working at a luxury travel company world shut down, travel shut down, got yeah. laid off, jumped into social media 
<laughs> I was a COVID influencer glow up story because I had absolutely nothing else to do um, as I was applying to jobs and other things. But what ended up happening as I had jumped into social media was I, number one, monetized through brand deals pretty quickly. I think I had fully replaced my nine to five income by the time I hit 12K, which I didn't realize wow. was that shocking until I said it in my story. And everyone was like, oh, don't speed past that. What did you just say? <laughs> and so I started kind of teaching on it, diving a little bit deeper, having more conversations. And that's really when it clicked that you know, I had this hard skill, soft skill realization way back when I was in my first year of work post-grad. So why am I getting stuck in that again? Why am I pretending that this isn't a business knowledge and or a business that this isn't business knowledge? There we it's go. It's a business I got mindset. This. Yeah. <laughs> right. Why am I pretending that I don't have this information stored deep in my brain that I can use? I had done the coaching. I had done, you know, all of this stuff in the business world. So I ended up jumping into coaching and learning more and teaching people more. And keep in mind, this has been a huge journey since I started. I think I've pivoted my offerings and my services about a billion and five times. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's just like what I said is, you know, I had to learn and then unlearn all of what felt right and all of what was the rules of the internet. Yeah. Well, and, and they're constantly changing. I don't know how you keep oh, up. So I, 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 I don't because uh, I don't care about the rules. I break them all. <laughs> and, and that's part of what you preach. But I'm curious to know, how was it that you were able to make the connection between the things you were learning in exercise science and the things that you were learning in business? What were some of those similarities that you were seeing that allowed you to connect the two? You know, it was really just how I, how I was lit up by it. Like I, I felt this uh, passion um, that I felt when I was learning the same things in school. I, connected the two. I was like, oh, well, why do I, I'm passionate about this too. So if I'm passionate about both, like, why does it actually matter if I'm in the exercise science world or I'm in the business world? It doesn't. Why am I putting that standard on myself? Yeah. How hard was it to continue to work through that during COVID and continue to create content or find an audience in the middle of COVID when no one really knows what to do with their social media accounts at that time? Like I had that struggle. I was like, do I even continue posting? If I do post, should I only be posting about the pandemic? Because that's all anybody's right. talking about. We didn't really know what to do with our accounts then. So how did you find what was natural for you or your place in the middle of that and grow? Oh, you know what? Instagram was a very different place when when COVID was happening. I I mean, mm -hmm. it was all picture central. And I used to go out with a friend of mine who decided to also do this with me. We had a standing Tuesday date where we would go do something fun, something that kept us away from thinking about the stress of I need to get a job and yeah. the world is shut down. And we would take a bunch of pictures and that was that those were those were my newbie gains online and we kind of figured it out together because we had this sounding board of okay you're doing this i'm doing this what's working what what are brands liking what's going on and then when i finally got into reels um at the start of let's see 2021 was when i first jumped into reels um I committed to actually doing them because I so did not understand how I was going to put myself out there in video. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, I kept seeing these glow up stories. I kept seeing the, oh, I gained 30K overnight. Thank you for this 100K, whatever. <laughs> and it's, it was so wild. So I was like, why am I not, why am I not utilizing this? Why am I not jumping into this now? Um, so it took a while, but I ended up putting out a transition tutorial and mm. I I did this because I kept getting asked, like, how how on earth are you doing this? Like, how, why, how did you make this video? And I remember someone that I went to college with commenting on this video um, and saying, why would anyone want to know this? And I ended up replying and saying, 
haha, I'm like just showing my friends how to excel online, like how to do things online. And a week later, this video hit 1.5 million views, which was wow. a different a different number back then. I feel like views have kind of gone off the chain lately and people are hitting big, much bigger numbers than that. But at that point, I think I brought in like 16K of the right audience with this video and I mm. dove into it. I mean, on online, if you find something that works, you run with it as fast as you can. So I dove into this transition tutorials thing. I was the first one to bring transition tutorials in the native platform to Instagram, or there was probably a handful of people that did it kind of at the same time, but like no one was doing it when I first started doing that. Yeah. And it was, it, I, I mean, it was, it, like I said, it's been a whole journey of like trying to figure out what what feels right online because let me tell you as a niche that was exhaustive <laughs> <laughs> trying to get creative and you know throwing clothes around my living room trying to make magic oh on God. reels yeah so you you are one of the early adopters of reels and that's kind early of how, early early yeah that's how the whole thing started so yeah. and you mentioned something very interesting there's a difference between the right audience and the wrong audience mm -hmm. can you elaborate more on what you mean by that yeah, of course. So with Reels and with virility, we think of it as like a godsend. Like, oh my God, I'm trying to chase virility. I want this video to go viral. My life will change if I have 100K. But yeah. you know what? I've had so many clients that gain, you know, 100K in a weekend, something astounding, something crazy. Wow. And yeah. you know what that is? It's a bunch of middle-aged men in India. Why and is it always them? It's always yeah. them every time. It's like, listen, sir, <laughs> sir, I am posting for the girlies. I am not posting. I am posting for, for the girlies. If I could turn off the men button on, <laughs> on Instagram, I absolutely would. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that would be the wrong audience. You're not trying to market to them. You're trying to build this audience that would be interested in something you're actually putting out, something you're actually offering. If this girl is doing fashion hauls all the time and she has a ton of men in India, they're, they are, they ain't buying from her like to know it. No, no. no. So they just what I brought her. in was a ton of people that were interested in my actual coaching and the knowledge that I had and I could monetize from it. Yeah. And that goes to you developing your own influencer agency too. You start right. to give other people these tools for anybody that doesn't know what all influence management is. Can you explain what it is and what it really does? Yeah, of course. So we are a talent agency for creators. We predominantly work with people that are very business minded and have some kind of business as as is, not just brand partnerships. So we'll have okay. like a therapist that's running their online business as well as wants to monetize with a second stream of income through brand partnerships. Um, whether that be, you know, loop earplugs or a headband <laughs> that helps you with meditation or whatever mm. else, something that makes sense for their audience. Um, so we help to not only build their business up with a little bit of behind the scenes strategy, build their business to be something bigger, but we also help with partnership management, locking in okay. those deals, negotiation, that kind of thing. That can be hard because if, especially if you're somebody that's doing this on your own and maybe you're at a point where it's not quite your full-time thing yet, but you're still doing a lot of it and you're almost there and you're getting these contracts, you're getting these proposals. It's a new you language. To, you don't know what to do with them. I wouldn't know what to do with them. It, it's I, a, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a new language. There's there's no rule book. Um, and what's terrible is this is a very brand new female dominated industry. So there's a lot of, you know, sketchy, scammy behavior behind the scenes. And yes. a lot of these, a lot of these women just don't know the, they don't know the business rules of it. A lot of these women mm. are like stay at home moms who are very creative or, you know, jumped into this right after college again, creative brain. So yeah. to then be handed this contract with a ton of legalese, they, they're not a lawyer. And mm -hmm. so that's where we, that's where we really take it over and make sure that we're building this amazing relationship where 
they can stick to what they're good at. They can hand off things that stress them out and (laughs) they can build their business up with a little less, a little less hassle. (laughs) There, Hence the do less club. Like I I saw that everywhere. I saw that everywhere. And I was like, I want to know more about this just because I like the name. The two, who doesn't want to do less? Like do less club. Yeah. So it's funny because my, my signature program is called the do less club. Um, and I said this for the first time as a joke (laughs) and it stuck with people. It stuck with people. So I ended up making again on another whim sweatshirts that say do less club across the front. And (laughs) what that really, what that really means is as a female entrepreneur, as females in general, we're really good at the overthinking. We're really good at the all or nothing mindset. We're really good at the perfectionism. So it's not Mm -hmm. necessarily about, you know, do less, be lazy. I just want to sit on the couch and be a couch monster. It's that I have so much going on in my brain. My brain is like spaghetti with a billion thoughts happening. And Mm -hmm. I need to think less, think less, focus on one thing. Like I was saying earlier, that one goal that you were going after and cut out the BS, cut out the extras. You don't need it. You don't need it. (laughs) So it's a way to hyper-focus on one particular aspect of the business. It's a way to focus on the things that actually matter. There's, There's so many headaches of social media and just just being perceived, it's it's really hard to have your learning curve be on display as you are yeah. as a creator. That's what it really is, is like you're trying new things all the time. You're posting new videos. You don't know how people are going to think about, think, you don't know what people are going to think of them and you just have to go with it. That's hard. It's hard and it's hard to plan it all out. It's hard to put it on a particular schedule and Mm -hmm. not every, you know, not every video you make is suitable for TikTok or Instagram reels or YouTube. There's, there's sort of a, there's sort of this unspoken thing that sort of guides you depending on what platform you're using. This might be a better fit for this one than the other one. Yes. Yes. It's a lot to keep track of. They're all different audiences, but make sure that you're reposting on every single platform and that you have YouTube and Pinterest and TikTok and Instagram and one will flop and one will hit and then (laughs) engage for 30 minutes before and after on each platform and (laughs) too much. (laughs) No, (laughs) just throw the spaghetti, just see what it does. Throw the spaghetti, see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) See how it lays out. Maybe we like a little bit of marinara, maybe a little bit of fettuccine, whatever. Right, maybe maybe we're a pesto girl, who knows? (laughs) Who knows? (laughs) Just go with it however we can. So what makes doing less good for you? Oh my goodness. So many things. <laughs> <laughs> I I ran into this problem about a year into entrepreneurship where I really got into the mindset of all or nothing. I have mm. to, you know, I'm, I'm at my desk by 7 a.m., I don't get up from my desk until after six, maybe some Uh, days. That's a full 12 hour day. I know I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't have brain space. I'm so passionate about what I'm doing, but I'm being a bad boss to myself. I'm being Mm. a terrible, terrible boss. I'm being the boss that I would complain about. So why am I creating? I am literally creating this business that I hate. And that really sucked. So this point of do less club really came after a severe case of burnout, severe Mm. and sticky. And it lasted, I don't know, eight months of me doing literally bare minimum, bare minimum every single day, because I just had zero emotional ability, capability, (laughs) capacity, um, zero physical capacity to do anything. And I was like, this is something's got to give this is too much and this is lasting too, too long. So it's really been about, you know, how can I revolt against this corporate normative culture of I have to work nine to five because I actually don't and I'm not productive if I'm working nine to five and do something that makes more sense for me, be a better boss for me. 
Yeah. The kind of boss that you would actually enjoy working for, right. not the kind that you would hate. The, what was it that led to the burnout? What did that schedule or oh my the God. workload look like? How yeah, long were you so, doing that for? So let's see. In the end, at the end of 2021, my, okay. So my business blew up at the start of 2021. And mm -hmm. then at the end of 2021, I started the agency and then this is all in the same week. I launched the agency, launched my podcast and wow. launched six mini courses and then launched another round of my signature program, which was not do less club at the time, which was just another program. And She's for I know dumb, dumb. She's not busy at all. Right. There's there's a reason that I wear Do Less Club across my chest every day. And it's because I need the reminder. You know, <laughs> like tell me you do too much without telling me it's across my chest. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I had all of these things going on and I don't even know who I was trying to impress. Oh, I do. It was myself. <laughs> me. Always, it's always right, us. Me. We're our own worst critics every time. Right. And it, Right. And I'm really good at maximizing others' achievements, like biggest cheerleader. But then for myself, I'm like, oh, I didn't do enough. I didn't, you know, what's what's going on here? So I did all of these things. I, I prepped it. I remember like sitting in my office with this ring light blaring, trying to film the ends of these these six mini courses so that I could have a full product suite. Um so that I, you know, could follow all the business rules that I'm supposed to follow. And I launched them and I actually had to uh, push back my round of my program because I just didn't have capacity. I, I hit a wall. I was like, this sucks. I can't, okay. I feel like I can't market all of this. I feel like I can't catch up. I feel like I am a pinball machine in my brain trying to yeah. bounce off of every last thing. I remember having our account manager at the agency literally read me my emails so that I could dictate to her my response <laughs> because my brain just wasn't working. And don't think that I'm like, wow. you know, I'm sitting in my yacht dictating emails. I like couldn't, I couldn't you don't sit have the down time. and write an email. I was, yeah. I was so overwhelmed that, you know, the thought of looking at my inbox, oh, uh -oh, no, no, no. Mm -mm. And seeing that giant red number. Oh, you don't want to know how many unread I have right now. Ooh, like, that's... I get panicked. Like, <laughs> I'm I, one of I those people. Anxiety. I know, well, me too. I get anxiety if I see like <laughs> one. If I see a, a red one on my like email notifications, I'm like, what is that? What did I do? And then, but again, we're our own worst critics. It's always right. us that does it to that. So right. you shifted this like almost 12 hour long day schedule to what worked for you today. What, how does things look today for you and your schedule and your workload? How is it Ugh, better? Easy breezy, beautiful. Um, no, we're in a, we're in a process. I mean, I'm still, yeah. I'm still learning. I try so hard to keep us pretty slow morning and I've eased back on a lot of my one-on-one -on -one calls. I pretty much took away a lot of my one, one-on-one -on -one calls and leaned into mm -hmm. this program, uh, predominantly so that I just have space. I mean, I really am an ideas person. I thrive off of conversations. That's what fills me up. And as a listener, I would really recommend like thinking deep about that, reflecting on what fills you up, what lights up, lights up your life. Because if it's, you know, more clerical, if it's the ideas, if it's the problem solving, whatever that is, find that and do more of that. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, with the clerical stuff, I hate to, I'm a, I'm a Aries, I'm a fire sign. So of course, typical, I'm like, I don't want to do clerical work, but <laughs> <laughs> and this Capricorn could do it. I'm like, all right, let's schedule yeah, you're how easy. I'm going to make this payment. I'll, let's schedule how, how I'm going to make right. this payment and launch this and post that. Right. All the logic. That. I have none of it. <laughs> well, it's just, and then, and, but I also, at the same time, I'm obsessed with design, like yeah. the, designing graphics for whether it's this podcast or, you know, just designing little promo graphics for anything that I'm doing. I love the aspect of creating a little thing of art, like mm -hmm. wherever it ends up, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, I'm like, I would never want that taken away from me. And that's yes. the kind of thing that you're talking about that. Like yes. you, that's, th those little Find things that, that you're thing. like, yeah. 
Yeah. And what I, what I actually ended up doing to really nail down that, that thing was I, I was working with a burnout coach, um, a life coach that specialized in burnout. Um, her program is called the beam life. You can find her on Instagram at the beam life. And she's amazing. Love her. Yes. Um, she's, she's amazing. So what, what she had me do was at the end of every day, she would have me write down. I did enough because I did X, especially well, one thing, oh. only oh, one. Okay. And so what I ended up writing down at the end of every day was like, I had a great conversation with this person, or I had, you know, I helped blink, move the needle. And it had nothing to do with all of this clerical stuff. It had nothing to do with all of these big mountains that I was trying to move. It had to do mm -hmm. with personal one-on-one -on -one connection and conversation. Mm -hmm. So me trying to do all of these things that I felt like I was supposed to do was so silly. And I've kind of learned, okay, I'm going to take my morning slow. I'm going to make sure that I go outside with a dog. I'm going to actually see some sunlight. Wow. I'm going to try to yeah. do some kind of meditation. I'm going to try to eat my breakfast before I drink coffee, and be the best version of myself. And I'm just going to like, let my nervous system relax above all. Yeah, and lean that's into those conversations. So important. And the personalization and the one-on-one -on -one conversations, I mean, that's essentially what podcasting is. And I know you've got mm -hmm. your own, you have your own lovely brand meets creator podcast. Was that the thinking behind launching that? I, I already like these one-on-one -on -one conversations. I already like this one-on-one -on -one interaction. Why don't I just launch my own podcast? The podcast came a little bit before, but you definitely oh, see okay. a shift in the conversations that are happening uh, recently. So me and my co-host started it, uh, Sonia Ali, she's amazing in the uh, brand beauty marketing world. Um, we, we started it because of the, the piece I mentioned about there's no handbook, there's no rule book to influencer no. marketing. And a lot of the time, the way that I was feeling when I was getting these, when I was getting requests or emails from brands was like, I was trying to do my homework without the lesson. I was trying to do my homework mm. without the textbook. And I felt like I was sitting there and no one could tell me what to do. And I couldn't find resources on it. So the podcast was really a place to dive into some of those conversations and talk about what it actually means behind the scenes to be a successful creator, what it actually means to um, like work with a brand and be a great brand partner. Um, and it's kind of pivoted further into this, this do less piece of how do you fight the perfectionism? How do you fight the troll comments? How do you find uh, who you really yeah. are as a, as a personal brand? Because I mean, that's the hard part. The hardest. Figuring out who you are as a brand. Growth isn't hard. Finding no. who you are as a brand is really hard. <laughs> yeah. And then on top of that, you know, assessing and being really honest with yourself about whether or not you are a good fit for a brand and whether you should approach them or what, you know, what are you doing that's making you attractive to them? If, the, if that's what you end up wanting to do. Yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. Like, I, my dream brand would be to work with something like Rare Beauty or Doc Martens or something like that. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. I, I would love that. That would be fantastic for me. But I think it's possible just because I feel like the missions of both of those brands align with mine. Yes. And I think that's a key, like a huge yes. part of it. Yes. I, we actually just pitched, um, one of our creators to rare beauty. Um, and the reason that we did that was because Selena Gomez is, has been in the news for getting body shamed, um, yeah, again for the thousand yeah. time, which I will never understand. Like, right. And it's like, number wrong. one, you have a medical issue. Number two, yeah. get out. <laughs> Bye bye. We don't need to hear this. Oh, right. And, and, right. And all the stuff with like Haley Bieber and Kylie Jenner on top Ugh, of that. I'm like, girls. is this the last thing that she needs? Why are we doing this? Like, what's Selena your take on nothing. that? Who's, what, who's, my, who's fault? Oh, Kylie and Haley. Bye. For sure. For bye. sure. Bye. Instigators. Bye. Yes, like, come on, well, we're going to post a whole picture about eyebrows when you're just caught making fun of Selena. Instigators. And her eyebrows. Yeah. Like, it's like a little. I'm like, really? You, at this point, you're both in your mid-20s. 
it's yep. not like it's not cute anymore it's not cute it's, it's not funny selena no. has done nothing but like create brands and a space where people feel welcomed and it's positive space yes. and rare beauty is all about mental health advocacy as yes. well which, which is those are the types of things that i feel like i was in line with but i'm like it also makes me question how anybody comes for her when she's not really coming for anybody else I, I yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't know why we think that's fun. So that's actually the reason that we pitched, we pitched this creator to this brand because okay. she is, she is in the body positivity space. She's gone through a yeah. ton of like eating disorder issues and mindset issues, talks about it all the time and does a lot of the, the storytelling while she's putting on her makeup so yeah. we came to them and didn't even lead with the you know people are asking about her makeup it's leading with the storytelling and leading with the you know we heard about this selena thing i've already done a post on it and mm -hmm. here's here's how you align on that deeper foundational level mm -hmm. and i'm sure the result was great i'm sure she was happy yeah yeah, we'll yeah. we'll see how we'll see how it works out. <laughs> okay, so still in process. Okay, still in process. Got okay, got it. And so, what's next for you? What can we look forward to for you? Oh, nothing new because I'm trying not to do it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. For the reasons I'm that you kidding. stated earlier. Right, <laughs> exactly. So yes, you can find me obviously on the Harley Jordan on Instagram. You can also find me on Brand Meet Creator Podcast. We put out new episodes every week diving into the influencer marketing space. Like I said, a little bit about how you can realistically become a successful creator and telling those those creator stories along the way. Um you can also sign up for my wait list for Do Less Club in the link in my bio, and I'll hand off a link here so you can put that in the show notes. Okay, sweet. Harley, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for all the thoughts and this moment of kicking in just a little bit. I appreciated it. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for having me.